are going to see a number of novel inhibitors, um, mostly developed for the known targets. So BTK inhibitors from several companies, PI3 kinase inhibitors alone or in combination, we will see, and I think that's one of, one of the important steps now in CLL, combinations of antibodies plus inhibitors. As always, uh, one of the highlights of the whole meeting again becoming CLL. It's gone from being a sleepy valley disease to kind of the disease in which we're able to show the real translation from science through to, um, to treatments. Things like, you know, BCL2, BTK, PI3K, prominent um, molecules in cancer biology becoming druggable uh, in, in general practice or in clinical trials. And really with these new agents, uh, we achieve results for our patients that are really you know, far better than anything that we could have hoped for in the past with chemotherapy. We have actually been looking at how we can try to incorporate uh, other ideas of the biology of the cell because these new therapies really have come about by our understanding of how the biology of CLL works. We are beginning to understand what makes this leukemia cell really tick, what makes it grow, what stimulates it, what keeps it alive. And based on that knowledge of the biology, you can now either use small molecules to inhibit some of the signals that the tumor cell has to receive in order to survive, or you can actually use antibodies that block critical receptors uh, that are important for leukemia cells to survive. We're starting to unpick in, in vivo the, the dynamics of the CLL cell. So, so um, there was some really nice work looking at deuterated glucose labeling from, K from King's College Hospital in, in the UK, uh, which shows that uh, we can identify the proliferating cells in individual patients, and also a, a, a subset of cells in a patient which isn't doing much, it's just quiescent. And it may well explain why we, with drugs like ibrutinib, we see some residual lymphocyte count going on for many months, and it may uh, direct our therapies better. We are working hard on bringing the IWCLL to New York. We are very excited. We know that it will be um, in the spring of 2017. We expect uh, great attendance because it's, it's a, you know, a, a good place to do research on science, but the most important thing is by then we expect to have a couple extra new drugs approved for CLL, hopefully. Um, for example, the FDA is currently reviewing the data on ABT199. Um, and we will hear soon, hopefully, about the, the, the approval or not. And um, the FDA is also reviewing the data for um, ibrutinib as frontline on patients older than 65. So um, by then, we hope to have a little bit of more information also of the data that we have on intergroup trials of ibrutinib against, in combination with rituximab against FCR, or ibrutinib as a single agent or in combination with rituximab against BR for frontline elderly patients. So I think all that data will be a little bit more mature. Right now, um, the trials are close to a finish accrual or close to accrual, and um, we'll have some follow-up data, which is so exciting. In 2015, we recognized two great leaders and investigators in CLL. One is Frida Stevenson from Southampton in Great Britain, who has done a lifelong work on B cell biology and diseases. And another person, a close colleague, a leader of IWCLL in Milan, in Italy, Federico Caligari's Capio should be so honored. His work on CLL and B cell biology and multiple myeloma have been world-class work and well-recognized 